My name is Facundo. My last name is Gauna. I'm a software engineer at Nevia. I work with Jared over here. Um, I have a blog, GaunaCode.com. You can shoot me an email if you have any questions or follow me on Twitter at GaunaCode. Why am I here? Well, Jared doesn't know this, but he's buying me lunch for the rest of the week. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we at Navia have also were hired to build an Alexa skill for a local IoT company, and it went public a couple of weeks ago, and it's pretty exciting. So I just wanted to come here and share how to get started, how to save you some time, and the lessons learned after it went live. Um, this is a screenshot from the portal that we were just looking at a couple of minutes ago, but there's three types of skill uh, that you can build with Alexa. Uh, there's a smart home skill, which is really easy to do, uh, but it's limited. Uh, you have to do it in AWS and Lambda, and there are some phrases that you have to abide by uh, within that skill. So for example, if you want to build an IoT device and control it with Alexa, and you want to say, Alexa, turn on my lights, you're able to do that. But if you want to do something like, Alexa, uh, make my lights red, you can't do that. That's too custom. That's too specific to your IoT device. It's not generic enough. Um, there's also a different type of skill, like a flash briefing skill, which is either Alexa, tell me a joke, or uh, tell me the news for the day. It's really easy to do with Lambda and AWS, but it's limited because you have you can only use certain phrases. If you want full power and flexibility on what uh, your inputs and your phrases that you handle are, you have to build a custom skill. And in this scenario, it's a little harder to do, but it depends on the platform that you're using. And um, you can use anything you want as long as it's accessible to um, AWS from the outside. So for this scenario, well, we'll be using Azure. Hmm. So let's break down a phrase, okay? Alexa, to ask Jared to tell me a joke, okay? There's a couple parts to the phrase. Um, Jared in this scenario would be the invocation name. So if I had a skill, and I do have a skill actually I defined for this demo, but the invocation name could be Jared. Um, Alexa is gonna know to look for a skill when a user says the, the name Jared. Okay. Um, the second part of this phrase is called the utterance, and this utterance will be translated into an intent to do something, like an action for your skill. Um, underneath the covers, bird's eye view of what happens is you say, Alexa, ask Jared, tell me a joke. The utterance and the invocation name goes to Alexa Cloud Service. It interprets uh, the command received and it will issue an intent to your custom skill. Um, there's two clouds because really you can host your skill on any cloud provider you want and we're gonna be using Azure for the demo. Um, what's also important about this picture is the information flow. It's only one directional. So, for instance, if you want to inform the user that something happened a couple of minutes after they invoked you, you can't do that. So, let's say you're building an automated CompSpot IoT device, right? Uh, the user says, Alexa, ask my IoT device to start a pot of coffee. You say, okay, I'll start a coffee. What you can't do is a couple minutes later, once that coffee is done, is re-invoke Alexa and say, hey, your coffee is done. You can't do that. Instead, the information flow has to be such as that. You say, Alexa, make me a pot of coffee. You say, okay. Then um, the user gets a little impatient and they say, Alexa, is my coffee pot done? And then you say yes or no. So it's one direction. You can think of Alexa being a little narcissistic. She doesn't care about others, she only cares about herself, so you only speak when you're spoken to, basically. Um, getting started with development, I would uh, go on GitHub, go on the developer portal, look at open source samples. There's a lot of security checks that you have to do uh, in order to be certified by Amazon. They're not hard, but people already built them for you, and they're simple. Uh, 
checks, like checking the headers of an HTTP request coming in and validating the, 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 the certificate with that request. Using .NET, uh, there is a media package called ssskillskits.net, and it does all these security checks for you. Another tip uh, when you're developing your Alexa skill is to reduce the feedback loop. You don't want to be um, coding and playing around with the verbiage and then having to talk to Alexa every couple of minutes because that would take forever. Um, so write some unit tests, especially for IoT devices where you're using commands to something else. Reduce that feedback loop so you test your logic separate from Alexa, then you can bring the two together and test the, uh, everything as a whole. Another tip that helped me, um, after uh, you, you get a couple of intents defined, you'll find yourself tweaking a lot of responses over and over again. So it's a good, it's a good practice to have all your in, uh, responses in one place, like an JSON file or just one big class with a bunch, bunch of constant variables so you can constantly tweak them. And I will show you how to use an Azure App Service. So let me give you a quick demo. So I have, I have a web service hosted with Azure. I'll show that part in a second, but for, um, yeah. You mentioned you need a specific, is there a specific framework for this? For you would have to. Systems, or is it all local? You would build that yourself. Okay, so right. you'd have to build the unit test framework that's not locally to Azure, essentially send an expected. Yeah, you, very, you, you know your own logic, right? So you know what kind of units are the most important and what you have to test first. Yeah. Yeah. You're not you're not unit testing um, Amazon or Alexa's like ability to take your phrases and utterances and turn them into, you know, what you want. You're not testing that part, but test after the right now. Yeah, test what the value you're providing to the table, right? Because at the end of the day, um, command is just going to be a bunch of JSON and it's going to be translated to some kind of logic on your side, right? Uh, so the skill is really simple, just tell me a joke. Uh, this JSON is posted to your API and the response comes back here as plain text. And so it tells you a joke, what do you call a cow with two legs? The answer is lean beef. Wah, wah, wah. What's the answer? Lean beef. Lean beef. <laughs> Come on, you know this joke, right? I do it's your it. joke, man. <laughs> anyway, um, the Azure side is really simple. An Azure App Service is basically a platform as a service, just a web app. Um, from Visual Studio, All I do to publish my web app is go to publish and then click the publish button and it gets published. <clears throat> uh, for .NET, there is a new package called Alyssa Skills Kit, which I'll show in a second. finished publishing there it published but I'm just trying to show you the default page so that was really quick it published in a couple of seconds um, when you're troubleshooting your skill uh, there is a menu on the left with uh, Visual Studio which you attach a debugger to your Azure app service so if you want to you know use a debugger to step through the code which I'll try right now Debugger. 
of orange. Uh, this is the entry point. Can you guys see that? This is the entry point um, for the custom skill. Uh, even though you can have many different intents that your skill handles, there's always only one in, uh, entry point for your skill. So regardless of what intent I, uh, gets invoked, it's always going to be this post and your default URL for your actual app story. So let me go back to the developer portal going to invoke my custom skill somewhere. I'm going to go other. There, and I can hit, I hit my debugger. And so that's how we built our skill at Navient. Just basically each time that we wanted to test against Alexa or we publish it to Azure, attach a debugger, and it'd be fairly simple. Five minutes? out of the demo. I've got some tips for custom uh, user experience. Like I showed you guys uh, just a couple seconds ago, uh, you can use a portal to test how the utterances get interpreted into um, the intents. You can also use uh, Holly's ability test Holly usability test is a practice where you grab a coworker, you grab a friend, you grab somebody from a coffee shop, anywhere, and uh, basically they don't have any background in your skill. You give them a, a, a task, a list of things to do, and you let them struggle with it, and you see where they get stuck. You write some notes, and you determine whether or not um, that's an issue on your part, or you just didn't prepare them long enough. You want a new. If you want to know who somebody is, who's making that call from an intent, uh, then you need to implement account linking. And account linking is basically um, when, whenever somebody enables a skill on Alexa via the companion app, um, there's going to be a little login page on if you need your own OAuth server. And um, each time that an intent is triggered, it will give a bear token which each of those uh, requests coming in person that invoked the skill was uh, a typo but I meant to say rinse and repeat <laughs> <laughs> rinse and repeat uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, tweaking on your responses especially when you test with other people uh, probably about 50% of the time it's going to be just tweaking responses and seeing the flow of how your responses are being said by Alexa. Some lessons learned after we went live. The review process by Amazon is really long. Expect it might take several weeks of back and forth. They can be really picky, they're really stringent, and it can be a good thing, but just build that in into your estimates because it, it will take a while. If you have an IoT device that goes along with your skill, expect to send a couple to Amazon <laughs> because they want to test it end to end. And we had to do that. Um, also, another tough lesson was if a similar skill was approved, like a competitor, a direct competitor, it doesn't mean that your skill will be approved. If you build in a coffee pot skill and there's a, a skill out there that's already a coffee pot and you base your skill off of theirs with some improvements, Amazon is going to be like, okay, yeah, this is really good. You know, they might still have feedback in a lot of it. There's always a different team assigned to the review process like this. Um, users are cool. They get frustrated very quickly. so. Keep note of that. Do your due diligence. Unit test it. Hallway usability test it. Um, test from a portal. You know, cover your paces.
good job or not. And um, I was reading through some of the views of his skill that we released, and some of them were pretty silly. It's like, my phone doesn't work, okay? Like, why are you giving me one star? That has nothing to do with Alexa, it, you know? So keep that in mind. Um, you know, shoot for the stars, but if you get some poor views, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, some resources, the Alexa documentation is really good. There's also an Alexa Slack group. The web page that comes up, you invite yourself to it. Uh, the Alexa forum is really good when you have Out, can't really put out the answer anywhere. Amazon developers hang out in the Alexa forum, so that's a good place to get you know um, feedback from them or get a hold of them. And Amazon also has developer office hours. Available to you. Any questions? Yeah, I just want a coffee pot.